If you are attempting to pour the foundation yourself, please follow the blueprints included in your information packet. Using a backhoe, dig down where each piling will be placed. Make sure your corners are squared and place your piling in each hole. 55 gallon drums are perfect for piling forms. Cut out the top and place them upside down in the hole. Once they are in place, squared, and you have backfilled around them, simply cut out the top using a torch. The bottom of the barrels must sit 48 inches below the surface to comply with foundation regulations. In this picture you can see trenches dug between the piling sections. Simply place rebar in these trenches and use the dirt walls as your forms. This ties the sections together and keeps them from shifting over time. In some states a solid pad is required under the entire scale. In that case trenches are not required as the pad will hold everything together. Using 2x6s, form a box around each piling section. Make sure they are level and square to each section. Then place rebar in the box, making one foot squares. Once everything is squared and level, you're ready to pour your slabs. A thicker cement should be used for the pads than for the trenches. Using a straight 2x4 or 2x6, you can then screet the cement and make it level. Next, pour your trenches. Make sure to trowel the pad over the barrels. This is where your load cell stand will sit and it is important for it to be smooth. Once your foundation is done, but before it has dried, place rebar on the ends where your approach aprons will be. This will later be bent and tied in with your aprons. Once your foundation has dried, set your stands on the pads over the barrels. Then take your links, pins, and load cells and set them nearby. Now you are ready to set your scale. Usually any large loader can be used to set these scale sections. In this video the customer rented a crane. A 40 foot section is approximately 6,000 pounds. Be careful when setting the scale and adjusting the stance to not get your fingers caught. Straddle the large I-beam in the center of the stand. In this video a 70 foot scale is being set. Any scale over 40 feet will come in two or more sections. Make sure when setting your scale you face the side with the junction box towards the scale house. Using a short bottle jack and blocks, jack up each corner of the scale where your stands sit. Place your link in the center and your load cell through the link. Here is a better view of the load cell setup. First, jack up the scale and make sure your stand is evenly set on all sides.
Next, take the link and slide it in the center of the beam. Take your load cell and run it through the top of the link. There will be an arrow at the end of the load cell. Always make sure it is pointing down or your scale will not weigh correctly. Take the pin and run it through the bottom of the link. Make sure it is all lined up properly and slowly release the jack. Be mindful of your fingers. It is very important that no part of this setup touches the scale except for the top of the pin. If anything is rubbing at any other point, your scale may not weigh properly. Any scale with two or more sections will come with a flange on one end of the section. This section should be set first. Then the second section will sit on the flange of the section already in place. A load cell will be set where these two sections meet. A chain come along is a good tool to use to tighten the two sections together. It is not necessary to weld these sections together. However, you can if you want to. Once the deck is poured, they will not come apart. You are now able to weld on the outriggers. Place each outrigger where each cross brace runs through the way bridge. Make sure you have a tight fit against the web of the 10 inch I-beam. Using a sliding C-clamp, tighten the outrigger against the leg of the 10 inch I-beam and make sure it is square. Now you can weld it in place. If you are not an experienced welder, it may be wise to first tack the outrigger in several places and check square before laying down a thick bead. It is now time to put on the 5 inch channel. This is the framing for your deck. Make sure it is evenly centered on the end of the way bridge before welding it in place. After your ends are in place, you can then set the sides. This particular scale was designed to have posts put on the end of the outriggers. Most truck scales will have the outriggers level with the deck edge. Typically, you would use a straight line to make sure it is straight. Once you are sure of the positioning, weld it in place. Now you need to run the load cell wiring. Remove the cover of the junction box on the side of the scale. Then remove the circuit board. Run a fish tape through the conduit. Scales with multiple sections will require some conduit to be placed on location. Tape the end of the load cell wire to the fish tape. Have someone feed the line through while you pull it through at the junction box. Once the wire gets to the flex conduit fitting, screw it into the coupler.
Once you have run all the load cell wires through, take the ends of the wires and hold them together. Then run it through your hands, making sure none of the wires move independent of each other, all the way up to the junction box. This eliminates the excess wire while leaving the length of the wires the same as to not affect the calibration. Expose one quarter inch of wire on each smaller wire. Remove the bare wire. Number each wire from each load cell as shown in the drawing. Load cell number one is always the furthest to the left from the scale house. From there, go in a clockwise motion and number them respectively. Reinstall the circuit board. The circuit board is numbered with the same number of load cells that are in your scale. Connect each numbered load cell to its number on the board. For example, 1 to 1, 2 to 2, etc. The wiring will be red to EXC plus, black to EXC minus, green to SIG plus, white to SIG minus, and remove the bare wire. This can be done by your registered service technician, but will save him time and you money if you do it yourself. Next, place your underlayment for the deck. Corrugated siding works great. Then lay your rebar in one foot squares. Finally, you are ready to pour your deck and aprons. We recommend using five and a half sack with fiber mesh. Use 1% calcium or higher elite if you want it to harden faster. Rockwell Scales recommends waiting two weeks before vehicles should drive across it. Thank you for watching this installation video of a Rockwell truck scale. We hope you are happy with our scales and they provide you years of reliable service.